Hey, today I'm here to share with you a core belief of mine that transformed my life, continues to transform my life, and that I think you would really love to use in your own lives and to benefit from. This one belief, holding on to this one belief, literally has impacted almost er every area of my life and in a positive way. So I have always been interested in metaphysical things, spiritual things since I was very young. And so from a very young age, we talked about manifesting in my household, the power of your words, the power of speech. And this belief started out like a little seed within me. And over time, it grew and grew. And now it's one of those core beliefs that I don't know when I would be without it. I'm going to come back to this analogy of the seed as I tell you my story. Now, when I was in my late 20s, I was dating this musician. And from the minute that we first started dating, there were fireworks. I felt loved. I felt seen. In terms of astrology, he was Pisces. I'm Scorpio. It was one of those, it felt like a match made in heaven. And yet over the next couple months, some of the fire cooled down. Our compatibility didn't really work out. I was a teacher getting up very early to commute to school, working a long school day. And by the time I would get home in the evening, sometimes that's when he was just waking up to start his day to then eat dinner slash breakfast, go have a gig and have the rest of his evening. Well, ultimately it reached a point where I could tell things weren't working. And I asked him to have a month off that month at the end of the month, instead of us missing each other, well, I greatly missed him. It became very clear that we just weren't compatible. Now, part of me, half of me almost felt so sad. And another part of me felt free. I have never ended a relationship prior to that one, where at the end of it, I felt totally free. And it made me realize there were so many ways that I was compromising myself in that relationship that I was compromising being who I was because I wanted that to work, that I had really stopped feeling like I had the freedom of choice, the freedom to be who I am. Now, at that point, I decided I'm going to date around for a while. Like I, I had really wanted things to work out with this guy, especially long term. It didn't at all. Somehow I was at a place where I had enough confidence. I had enough inner security, self-love that I thought, you know what? I just want to date and see what it's like just to date people, to not worry about being serious with anyone. Chance would have it that next month I met the man who would be my husband. Breaks out. Dramatic pause. We are having some winds here, so hence the power outage briefly, but great timing. So when I met him, it instantly felt different. And I really was encouraging myself, even though I was nervous, to just see where this relationship would go because I felt that things were gonna be different. And interestingly, two weeks before I met him, I had a dream that made me believe that something really good was coming in my life. Now, from an outsider looking in, this dream might not look that spectacular. I was at the ocean and feeling the pressure of the ocean waves on top of me. It didn't, by an outsider's point of view, seem very significant, but I knew from the feeling that I woke up from that dream, I thought something good is coming to me. Not long into the relationship, my boyfriend, Ed, later to be my husband and I, both commented to each other how this relationship felt different. We couldn't quite explain what it was. But there was something different about it. And we both were noticing that and feeling really positive about it. Now, I want you to rewind about 15 years prior to that. Now, this is a journal that I first started when I was being homeschooled when I was in fourth grade. So I actually started the journal in 1989 and you can definitely see the child's handwriting. Now, as I said before, I was raised with this belief of the ability to manifest. I was raised with this belief that you can create something from nothing, that you are an active participant in your destiny, that you can plant a seed and from that seed harvest many things, harvest more than that seed itself, simply by the words that you speak, the actions that you have, the intentions in your heart and putting out the intention to manifest this thing that you want to have in your life. So from the beginning, similar to the beginnings of some biblical texts too, where they have this state of nothing and from nothing, something is created. If you look around at the objects in your home, even this device that you're viewing this video on now, 
these things were all once not here. They were in the realm of nothing. They were in the realm of ideas. But today, they're reality, they're creations. Somebody connected with that idea, brought it to life, brought it into existence, and now many people get to benefit from it. In my late teenage years, I started creating a list of the traits and qualities that I wanted in a soulmate. And I first started the list with the purple pen and I numbered it. He's sweet, he's cheerful, he's spiritual, he's friendly, he smells good, he's around my height or at least the same height as I am. It goes on and on. The first time that I let myself write the list, I got to 61 items and then I felt pretty good about that. And I knew that this probably wasn't gonna happen overnight, even though I really wanted to meet the soulmate person in my teenage years. I did not meet him in my teenage years, but I put this in my notebook knowing that if I have a clear idea of the person that I wanna meet, chances are that he will come into my life. And then a year or two later, I added to the list. So I took it from 61 to 85. And when you look at my journal, you can see the, the pen changes, even my handwriting has changed. I wrote it somewhere in my late teens and added to it a year or two after that. And then I just closed up the journal, put it with all my other journals and let it sit there. And I dated people, but I wouldn't compare them to the list. I just had that list in mind. I had some friends who had very short lists, some friends who had no list at all, but I kept on thinking, I really wanna meet this person in my teenage years. In some ways I was desperate to meet them. And then at a certain point in my early 20s, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna meet him somewhere. I'm gonna meet him someday. So why don't I just relax about it? Why don't I just surrender? Although I didn't use the word surrender then. Why don't I just believe that he's gonna come here? I did not believe that there would be a God or a creator, this divine spirit, intelligent being, who would create this beautiful universe with all these amazing creatures with acorns and pine cones and crystals and petrified wood and technology and silk curtains and and that I could live in a world with all of these beautiful things and I could have this amazingly deep desire for an amazing partner and that that would not be fulfilled. Not only did that seem unfair to me and I don't believe in an unfair being but I also felt that it just didn't seem logical. Why would I be given such a strong desire, such a deep thirst for having a partner to share my life with and not have that be fulfilled? So in my early 20s, I decided I'm going to shift the way that I think about this. I'm going to think when I meet this person, I will have so many wonderful things to share with him. We're going to have such fun getting to know each other. We're going to have such fun hearing about all the experiences the, the, that the other person has had. And I'm going to enjoy all the experiences that I have because I will meet him one day. One day we're going to be swapping these stories and connecting. But if I'm not if I'm not too fixated on him not being here, I can actually enjoy my life. And so I decided to let go of, I, I never really felt desperate, but let go of that really strong desire. Like, oh, I really want him here now. And just let it be what it was. Let Trust that our paths will cross, that we will come together. Well, as I said earlier, I was dating this one guy. It didn't work out. I was pretty devastated and also feeling free and relieved all at the same times. And I had kind of sensed that relationship was in decline. I was ready to date. I met who, the man who I would later marry and everything felt different from the beginning. I wouldn't say that it was love at first sight because we'd both gotten out of relationships with people who weren't that great for us. So we weren't moving too fast. We weren't jumping in too fast emotionally, but we had a strong connection from the beginning. And then a few months later, I found my list. And it blew my mind that of the 85 things on my list, he had 80 of those qualities. And I thought, you know, this is a pretty specific list. I have been adding to, I had added to it a few times. I had been really clear about things that were really important to me. And I felt worthy enough to say, here are 85 things I want in a partner. And in some ways, these are my non-negotiable. It's really important, I think, for any one of us. I know some people might hear this and think, oh, that you were picky and whatever. I really just allowed myself to dream. I allowed myself to create this vision of who is this person that I would like to have in, in my life? And what kind of person do I wanna be? What kind of life do I wanna have lived so that when I meet this person, I have stories to tell, I like who I am, I have, I have a good job or I have a good life. I'm not just relying on him to make my life. My life is already pretty good. And then being with him adds to that. Now I'm sharing this with you for a few reasons. One, you can create something from nothing. You can create a relationship where there was none before. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight. There's a lot of manifesting teachers who will talk about, oh, I manifested such and such in three weeks or three months. 
my husband didn't manifest in three weeks. He didn't manifest in three years. From the time in which I wrote the list, it was somewhere between seven to 12 years that he showed up. From my earliest desires and really strong wanting him to be in my life and my prayers for him. And when I first started writing in my journal about it, it was a good 15 years. From the soulmate list, probably about seven years until he came into my life. However, those seven years, once I finally released the fixation with him not being there, I enjoyed those seven years of my life. I lived great experience and I also had things that relationships that made it so that by the time I got involved with this person, I had already made some mistakes with people that it didn't work out with that I didn't make those mistakes again with him. And so I had become more mature, more emotionally intelligent and all of those things. Now I'm sharing this with you so that if you are someone who maybe you are looking and desiring love or a love partnership, maybe it's not love, maybe it's something else like a business or some other type of thing that you want to manifest. Let yourself really vision it. Let yourself be what might seem like a little bit over the top in making your list. As I said, my first list had 61 characteristics of my soulmate. The final list that was added to had 85 items. I was not being stingy with myself in asking for what I wanted. And I don't want you to be stingy either. It's hard to let all the beauty of the world, all the, the goodness that can come to you in when you feel like you can only ask for a little bit. So let yourself imagine, let yourself make a long list of these are all the things I want in a partner. These are all the things I want in my ideal day, in my ideal lifestyle, in my ideal business, in my ideal car, in my book that I'm gonna write, in my family relationships, whatever it is, let yourself have those dreams. And then let yourself have the time for this to happen, knowing that when you create this grand vision or this simple vision, when you create this detailed vision of what you want, the universe, God, creation is going to bring to you different options which may or may not fit. You're allowed to modify your, your vision. You're allowed to modify from the original version of what you came up with. As I said, I never on one of my dates with my husband took the list out and used it like a checklist. And at some point when we were dating, when he only met like 80 some of the items, did I get worked up about that? No, I was happy with all of the things that he brought to the relationship. But if I hadn't allowed myself to dream that big, he might not have been the type of person who came into my life. And the other aspect to this is, in addition to dreaming big and putting all of these details on a list, it's really incredible to then, as I said, surrender it and release it. Let yourself enjoy your life right now, even if that thing that you want isn't here right now. Trust that it will get to you eventually. Trust that it, if, if it's such a deep desire of yours, then it is truly meant for you that it will come to you, it or something better, and let yourself enjoy the days of your life and have experiences which really nurture you, which make you feel happy and whole. I would love to know, how do you relate to this story? Do you have a love story of your own that has a similar list or ways that you dreamed of the type of person? Or maybe it's not love, maybe it's your career, maybe it's another aspect of your life. I wanna know, is there something you have vested similar to I have? or? Is there another way that you relate to this? Do you relate to me in that stage where he hadn't come into my life yet and I was seeking and looking for someone to come into my life? I would love if you would comment below, share your, your story, how you relate to it, share a little bit about you and we can stay connected and keep this conversation going. See you in the next video.